Hello, I'm Abyx Toy Cat, and welcome back to an episode of the Minecraft Bedrock Update Adventures Let's Play. That's right, it is back, and one of the things I wanted to do is build a magma cube farm, or rather a frog light farm. I absolutely love frog lights. They are one of the best blocks that Mojang has come out with, and they're so good that I want to build with so many of these, but the problem is getting your hands on them by hand can be really tricky. This means we need an automatic farm, and so, I mean, how is that gonna go? And that we place some powdered snow. And then we can watch it. No! This is gonna kill me. No! Let me out! Let me out! No, my boat, my boat, and my frogs. No, my frogs! I don't have any. Oh! Top slams on top here. Oh no! Because here is my weird take on Minecraft. I think that building from tutorials is perfectly fine and normal, and it's what most people do when they want something like an automatic farm, but I wanna try and do things the old fashioned way. I know the vague mechanic that frogs eat magma cubes. I know magma cubes can spawn inside of Bastion sometimes, and I wanna try and use all of that information together to somehow make an automatic frog like farm that works at least somewhat so that I can get my hands on lots of these blocks. It won't go well, but that's the fun and come along with me as we try to do this. By the way, if you like playing survival a little bit different and you like seeing that on YouTube, please do subscribe, perhaps some notifications turned on so you can see more of the Toy Cat Let's Play because this is going to be an, a, a journey, huh? Okay, so step one is working out exactly how this thing works. I mean, I do have myself a magma cube spawner. Do I have two? No, I've got myself a magma cube spawner, but right now it's incredibly dangerous. So I think there's two ways we could do this, right? We could replace the bottom layer like, actually that might be a smart idea. Um, I, my, my thinking was it was only one layer deep, and so we could just like place a layer of glass on top of it. But I actually like better the idea of like filling in the cracks. I mean, it's kind of dangerous to do this with magma cubes chasing me. Oh, it's really dangerous to do it with this many magma cubes. Oh, and there's a gas too. This is, everything is going well right now, as far as I'm concerned. Yep, everything's great. This is, <laughs> where are these gas noises coming from? <laughs> Am I gonna survive? Oh my god, there is a ghast inside of here. How did you even? Okay, so that's one problem solved. Second problem is probably get my health back up, because if I could get that close to a near death from just two magma hits, probably best that I don't die. Okay, let's fly over to the right side of this area. Let's, uh, oh, I should have eaten before all of this. I will regret that when this goes poorly. Um, but as you can see, if we just block up a little corner, then now we're only, okay, just fly. This is going terribly. This is going very terribly. Oh! <laughs> My biggest issue right now, besides all of these magma cubes, is making sure I have like a properly safe little corner over here, and that we place some powdered snow, and then we can watch it. No! Okay, I'm fine, I'm great. So now we watch the powdered snow and we see if it really does hurt magma. Oh, it looks like it is. Do you see that? A magma cube just died. And so I tried this, and this was insanity, by the way. My first try was so many magma cubes hitting me so often, and the end result of this was that for the first time in a year, I lost my totem of undying. Yep, that should not have happened. That, that is a failure. Oh, still might die past it. This was really tragic, but you know what? I, I resolved to be way more careful after that, and you know what I did? I was not careful in the slightest, and so I had my first death this decade in my Let's Play world. That's right, I officially died, and I was really close to lava, so I was so terrified about what might have happened, and if I'm being entirely honest here, it actually led to me not playing the world for a few weeks because I was so worried. However, everything was mostly fine, besides my pride and my experience, and so I decided to continue working on this, but I realized I would need a different strategy. What is my different strategy? It looked something more like this. This is a super dangerous game, but I'm gonna try my best to do it. Every other, other block, I wanna include one of these. So, like where this glass block is right now, there needs to be one of these, I think. I don't know if I'm doing this correctly. I'm kinda winging it right here, and then there, we'll have another one. Yeah, we want to have them closer than that, I think, maybe. And we want to deliberately do this such that every non-small slime gets immediately melted. So we have a block over here next, which is hard to do because there's, there's lava chilling right there still. So I'll replace the lava with snow, assuming that works. Somehow that does, and then, oh gosh. <laughs> then we'll place snow on top of that block, maybe? I'm not even sure. 
You know, I'll just place the glass block down. I think I can afford this small luxury. And then we place another snow block over here. And then we place what? Why is there a ghast in here? Okay, this is this is horrifying. Um, and then we're gonna do the same over here. Two blocks apart. Snow block. Two blocks apart. Snow block. Maybe. Oh, I'm getting melted. As you can see, it's totally worked. I didn't punch a single magma cube, but I've got a whole horde of the little guys, which I can even murder myself with looting to get all of these magma creams. Or I could murder them with good old frogs and I could get the good stuff. What's even crazier is this kind of works like a fully automatic farm, because as you can see, if you leave the magma cubes long enough, even the tiny ones start to die here too. And then we just pick up insane amounts. Oh no, this is gonna kill me. No, let me out, let me out. Oh my God. That, that, there are so many mobs and they're allowed to attack you twice as many times per second. So there's no cooldown. And it just doesn't result in a very fair situation, in my opinion. But I survived it and that's what matters. That's what matters. Now it was time to move these frogs, and let me tell you, the way this was happening was not floating my boat whatsoever, and uh, yeah, this is the worst I've ever seen boat mechanics. It's just a reminder that they're the only way to easily move things around, but the word easy in that sentence is definitely a lie. Oh, did you hear that? I didn't even know frogs could take full damage. Isn't that insane that you can only rotate boats from the inside? Like what? Let's just lead them out. Then I get in the boat. No, 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 I'm getting in the boat. Then we rotate. <laughs> oh my God, is this really what we have to do? Yes, it is. Now we should be able to get the green frog back in the boat. Do you think there's a good reason why the green frog isn't getting in the boat? Or do we just have to accept that he doesn't want to get in the boat? Aha, yes. Okay, here is my alternative terrible idea, because I can't get the frogs to go back up a level. We'll just dangle them off the edge the entire way. Well, this is the most nerve-wracking thing I've done all day. These frogs were so hard to get into the nether, and so to dangle them on a string like this <laughs> goes against all my instincts. Um, who am I kidding? I, I, like a, I like a bit of a silly challenge from time to time. Oh, I hope the lead is working still. I haven't seen the frogs in a bit. You know what, the fact that it works through blocks, a little bit insane when you really think about it. But what matters is they made it here and now we can get them into the bastion. No, my boat, my boat and my frogs. No, my frogs. I don't have any, oh God, I don't have the, okay, okay. So we put the boat down, please don't jump into lava froggy. You two, this way, into the boat. Do you see the boat? That's where you want to be. Trust me. So if I said I was living my best life right now, I would be lying. I am going through some extreme feelings of all varieties right now. Why are you like this? No, why? This is the never. It's not a safe place for frogs. I'm bringing you to your favorite food source. I hear you don't like fireflies, so I'm bringing you to your your best altar. No! There's no partial measures of boats. You just move all the way, or you don't move at all. Like, come on. Why is it happening so slowly? <laughs> no! You're driving me crazy! Okay, so this is the riskiest situation I've been in for a while with that ghast right there. Don't even think about it, Mr. Ghast. Eventually he's gonna fall down here, right? I mean, that's just, that's how boat physics have to work, I assume. I'm gonna give them just the tiniest nudge of the, oh, what? Why would you fire at frogs, you monster? Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give them a nudge over here. Just a little nudge. <gasps> they take full damage when they're in boats. What sense does that make? Okay, I'm finally getting them inside again, where there's nothing that can hurt them besides their favorite spicy food. Takes a little bit longer than you'd like, but that's okay. So now these guys are gonna be left kind of near the first entrance, which I'll just say is there for the sake of this. 
Uh, we'll break this block over here, this one over here, and this one over here. Okay, yep, that seems good to me. And now as soon as... Oh, look at these frogs. They're like stuck jumping for some reason. Now we can produce all the rest of the frog lights too. This... On, honestly, they should be rotated the other way. But, you know, they're not, so that's fine. <laughs> We're placing all these hoppers on the ground because obviously a lot of these frog lights are going to be happening while I'm doing something else. I don't want to manually pick up the frog lights, so instead they go into a long series of hoppers, which all feed into each other until we have one big chest over here, which fills with all of these frog lights. At least it's meant to fill with all of these frog lights. Obviously right now it's kind of... Oh my god, we have so many frog lights and also other garbage. So yeah. Oh, this is beautiful to watch. One of the weirdest item collections in Minecraft I can now do by sitting nearby a magma cube spawner, like I'm doing. You know, I'll probably should put a glass pane here or something. <laughs> let's, yeah, you know, let's let's do that. Let's let's just let's stay safe. And let's put a glass pane there. And now I can watch as the magma cubes spawn. They're gonna get destroyed by the snow. As they get destroyed by the snow, they're gonna wanna come over here. They're gonna do that by these little holes. But as they do that, okay, they're gonna get to me apparently. I need something which can block this kind of partially. Um, a fence would probably do the job. I think a half slab would actually do the job a little bit better because then I can see more of them. Yeah, this, this works great. I can see the slimes, they can see me, there's no way they can get to me though. Instead they get eaten by... I mean, they should be eaten by frogs, I don't know why they're not being. Maybe if I walk around the other side, that'll solve that problem. Yeah, I mean, it's... No, they're just... The slimes can move the... Okay, so I guess I have to put the frogs somewhere where they're also trapped. And I think a clever, maybe clever way we could do this, is with slabs. Even though boats take up more than one block, they are an entity and so... Well, that, that doesn't work. I figured we could like place half slabs in front of them and lock them in that way. But it doesn't seem to work as intended. We can do that, but that's only making the problem worse, it looks like. Maybe we place... Okay, yeah, this is... This is all a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I might actually die from this too. You know what? Minecraft is a game with lots of logic to it. I believe the proper test for any farm is if you go AFK for long enough, does it still keep running? And I guess we'll do a version of that right now. I'm relatively confident I don't die if I chill here. I don't know how confident I really should be, but we'll find out if Minecraft makes some fun noises while I'm gone. Eight minutes in, and we have 12.52. Oh, they're not, they just, they somehow managed to move the, oh, come on, guys. Okay, so that just means don't put, don't put a hole over here by these guys. You want the only way in to be through that center from which they will run over here. 12.52, let's see what it is after 10 minutes. Okay, this is a serious problem. All that happens is a bunch of little slimes get bunched up over here and they don't ever go back towards the frogs. I think I need the frogs to be able to free roam for this to work correctly, but that seems like a big problem and hassle in its own right. And also the frogs will be able to jump right out. So I need to work out a one-way filter system for all of these annoying magma cubes which, come on guys, go towards... Also, frogs, why don't you rotate 35 degrees so you can look at the, the, the magma cubes as they're coming past? I'm just saying, it would make some sense. I could sit right here behind the frogs, maybe? But even then, the magma cubes can jump straight over somehow. And I don't understand it. Yeah, this is causing issues that aren't easily resolving themselves. Also, come on, there are frogs right over there. Why can't we eat them? Yeah, we, we need to let the frogs free roam. But how do we stop the frogs getting out, but also let the magma cubes in? Is a trickier question. But I think I have an idea. Actually, you know, I don't have an idea at all, but I do want to know what happens if I just let some frogs loose. There is a real chance I lose a lot of work here, but I've already lost a lot of work by not letting the frogs run, run loose. Which means, really, this is a... Okay, well, they're, they're already going somewhere they probably shouldn't be. Could you please go back to... Okay, we'll let one frog roam loose, and I'll 
put the other one in a boat up here or something. And because he's a snow frog, he should be able to not die inside of the... I'm hoping at least. Ah, but then if he goes out and does his own thing, he's gonna poop the frog lights into not... Yeah, okay, so this is a challenge. Ah. No, something just broke. They broke my Neverite helmet. I, I've i been damaged so many times because of the... This is silly, you know what? How, how often do you genuinely break an... It was fully repaired at the start of this episode. I lost not only my life today, but a full set of... Okay, so as you can see, he runs around and he's going to get a huge amount of them. But it is kind of problem causing in my opinion. And so we need to keep him in one place while also letting him roam free. Again, there's lots of smart ways we could do this, but I want to use the dumbest solution. Okay, so as you can see... You can move frogs around just about using leads. However, having the lead itself doesn't mean too much unless you fix them into place, like we can do with a boat, or like we can try with a boat. If I'm being honest, it's definitely more trying than succeeding. Okay, come on, you can do this. But as you can see, he's gonna fix himself in this boat. Well, I mean, he's not, but he should. <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> If you ever play Minecraft Bedrock and you expect the game to work correctly, you've already made the- OH NO! That was my only snow frog, you pieces of Okay, you know what? I need to calm down. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go get another frog. No, 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 there's, there's an easy way to do this. Instead of getting a whole new frog, I just need to get some wood. Fortunately, Minecraft's second best looking redwood is available for the grabbing. Okay, here is my genius, maybe not very genius solution, right? I get the frog on a lead, but instead of ch trapping him in a boat, I trap him onto a fence, just like so. Now the frog has to walk around this area and he can do so freely to eat his favorite food, but he can't get out too far. And so as you can see, Frog lights go straight towards me, and this adds to my lovely supply. So now, even though I spent 20 minutes getting basically no magma cubes, if this works effectively, it solves all of my other problems. Also, I feel like pink frog lights are one of the better ones. Like, do I want yellow? Not that much. Also, he's, apparently he's just gonna chill in some hoppers. I might need to half sap those up. Okay, so now I'm gonna try the exact same thing, but on this side with, let's just say the green fro frog, to keep things simple. Green frog, we're gonna tie you to this post. And now, okay, now everything is working much better now. Wait, no it's not. The green frog has lost his tie already? Why, where are you going, buddy? <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is proof of why everything you do in the never will always be a nightmare. And you should just avoid this dimension for a bit, you know? Don't come to the never. You're a cool, you're a cool guy, you don't do that. Come on, this is... This is ridiculous. You know, something I'm surprised hasn't happened yet, given that I built this whole thing of glass, is having a ghast come down and actually fire fireballs at it. I'm quite fortunate, you know? Sometimes things are so frustrating and everything is not working in any reasonable, logical, or even predictable way. But sometimes it's all okay. Sometimes you realize that uh, over the long run, more bad things could have happened that didn't. And even though it feels really unlucky, ultimately, it's always gonna feel somewhat unlucky. Also, yeah, what is this frog doing up here? <laughs> like, yeah, if anyone can work out what that frog is doing, I would love to know, because there's a ton of magma cubes here, but he doesn't care because he's busy walking into the wall. I mean, even if he just stopped walking into the wall, I'd be happy at this point. Okay, so now I'm gonna try out this system where I do the exact same thing but the frogs are on leashes, giving them more freedom to attack magma cubes as they come in. Will that work? I mean, I would guess probably not based on, based on the success rate so far, but you never know until you know. So let's sit and let's watch. Oh no, the frog is dying in the, in the it's getting chilled to death right now. No, 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 no. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. I think frogs are just doomed. But yeah, it is slowly but surely 
We are creating frog lights this way. We have found a way to make the farm automatic. It just comes at a very high cost. And, I mean, it's pretty cool that we have this many frog lights. What do we do with them? That's the funner question though, isn't it? So my final plan is something I haven't tested at all, but I bet makes some amount of sense. Because, hear me out, I think frogs like to jump really high or not at all. And so if we have a ton of blocks like that, now they'll have to actually climb above them and they won't want to and everything will be okay maybe. Maybe, I'm not sure. We put a bunch of top slabs on top here. Oh no, why would I save? Okay, he only destroyed one bit of glass, two bits of glass. No, okay, yep, no, my theory was wrong because the frog is repeatedly ignoring my advice. You wanna get in there, friend, in there. So the farm does work somewhat successfully, but it is still creating a lot of frog lights that aren't being picked up, but that shouldn't matter over a long enough time scale. I'm gonna do the whole, well, if you run a farm AFK, then, you know, it'll collect X amount over Y time. And so I'm gonna go for a walk and I'm gonna see how effective the frog light farm is during that. And then we'll collect the end results and see what to conclude from that. I really don't know what it will be like now, but that's the fun. By the way, do you like the changes I made in the meantime? Yeah, I, I tried to class the place up a bit. And by that, I mean make it look like it is a somewhat bad looking build rather than a fully bad looking build. It's still strange to mix Deep Slate and Blackstone, but I actually really like the end combination. So I think I might do this more in the future. That wasn't what I was expecting. How long ago did that happen? So this is where we could say it's all over. The last couple of hours of fooling around with frogs were for basically nothing because it barely works as a farm. However, you know what I decided to do? I decided we need to go right back at this. So I went to my base. I picked up uh, a bunch of iron so we could make some more hoppers because clearly they were coming out and killing uh, the mobs sometimes. So we needed to collect all of that stuff. Then we placed those hoppers down around the area they could come out. I brought another frog over. Well, I tried to bring a frog over and then <laughs> this happened. <laughs> Oops. And then after paying my respects to the frog, I decided to bring a second frog over. Um, then I decided to hollow out the entire area, just give myself some more space. I think uh, it's not necessary for the farm, but it makes this place just a little bit airier and more pleasant to spend time in. Then after forgetting how never brick fences are crafted, because as it turns out, you can't use leads on never brick walls. I mean, you can interact with them, which is really strange, but you can't put the leads on there. I then decide to tie both of the frogs that are outside of the area onto my brand new fences and I've got four frogs going at it and this is when things seemed like they were gonna go great and in reality a frog froze to death there was nothing I could have done to avoid it another one just seemed to go missing but after all of that they actually protected me and ate the frog lights and it went in the hopper system which means hopefully when we're over here now yeah we're actually starting to collect the frog lights now took some time took some some real time, and I think the death of two frogs. I, I, don't, I didn't even spot the second one dying, honestly. But we did it, we have something. <laughs> it works. Alternatively, the magma frogs come towards me and it looks like they're gonna make it, aren't they? Oh no, the fence is perfect for this. We just need the frogs to notice. And then when all of the magma cubes come in, the frogs aren't as excited. I think they actively do like just hunting for their food. You can see he comes over here every now and then, and you can tell from the increase in uh, frog lights that they are eating occasionally, but they're surrounded by magma creams, magma cubes, and they're just not going for it. But I enjoyed the, the process of making this. It does work, it's just not very efficient. There, we have all the steps that should lead to efficiency, but clearly they do not. Clearly, despite being able to walk, oh, that, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He went on a little killing spree right there. Um, 
yeah, despite having all this, all the, all the things you would assume they need, we're still getting relatively low rates. But still, we stay here AFK long enough, and we end up with all the frog lights in the world. And by that, I mean probably a stack or two, which is nice. I mean, it's, it's not the result you want, but I haven't died. I do have a farm. It is slightly spacier now, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Speaking of things that are pretty cool, I hope you enjoyed this new format of Let's Play. I know it was a little bit different than we've done before. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm trying out a few things. Every Monday in August, there is going to be a Let's Play. They're all going to be very different to each other, and I want to know which ones you like the best, what you like the most about each, which you don't like most about each. The, the, the intention is to continue the Let's Plays in some form regardless, but I'm trying out different things to see what I find most fun, and also to see what you enjoy too. I just don't understand. You're staring at them in the face, and only occasionally are you choosing to eat them. I, you know, it's, uh, mobs in Minecraft don't always work perfectly, uh, unconfusingly, but that's okay, uh, I, I guess we can say. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed, because I'll see you all, I, j just the process of making this has inspired me quite a bit, which is something you don't get when you're building a farm from a tutorial, you don't get inspired about different ways to tweak a design because you already know how it looks, you don't get inspired about um, you know, what you can do with some of the things you were playing around with. Um, like, this this boat has been really useful. I just used it to get frogs here, um, but it's it's been working out really well for me for other things. I love um, the... Uh, what I really love is just all the things that this has inspired me to do, and that's pretty cool. Anyway, I've, I've had a long enough speech now. Thank you for listening to it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode, because this was episode 500, and oh my god. We have a lot of episodes, huh? <laughs> but see you next time for the longest ever Let's Play episode. Uh, by, by a bit. By, by a bit. So, hope you're looking forward to it. <laughs>